Hey, this is Chug, and today we're going to be looking at Slash's ability. Now, when it comes to Ranger, Clutch, and Nyx, they all have extremely impactful abilities. It's very easy to see how they can get utility out of them. But when it comes to Slash, it's a little bit harder. So let's say I'm here, and I want to generate an advantage with my ability. How can I do it? You can see that it's a bit different compared to a Clutch Shield, a Ranger, or the Nyx Stealth. So, I'm just going to talk about the situations where I use Slash's ability and maybe shed some light on how you view Slash, um, maybe things you could be doing differently to just get more utility and value out of this resource. So let's say uh, this is FFA and TDM. Our first situation is area denial. We can activate our ability, come through, fight for the, uh, the major item, and manage the lines of attack. So a player that was following behind can't use this pathway anymore. Um, a player coming up these stairs may be deterred. The thought of going through, taking trail damage, maybe a rocket, is just a very vulnerable um, entrance point. This is especially good, bec like, this is a map specific thing, but generally the other entrances, the other, sorry, approach points, approach paths, are more exposed and open. I can hear the rocket uh, jump, uh, sorry, the rocket jump, the, the bounce pad at rocket. Um, I can manage this um, line of sight, and I don't have to worry about stuff coming from behind me because the trail's there helping to pressure that area and um, secure this pickup for myself or my team. When it comes to duel, especially higher ranked players of you know, high diamond or elite, you can't really rely on that sort of situation that much. There are situations for area denial, like here for example, let's say it's early in the round, my opponent doesn't have rockets, I do. Uh, I could trail it, come down, secure my item, and rocket jump back up in time before the uh, trail explodes. So if my opponent had come through, they see it's trailed, maybe they want to come in close, they hear the rocket jump, they're pressured away. So you, you keep map pressure on a particular point of interest, let's say an item or a weapon, while you go away, do something valuable, come back before that pressure has dropped. Or if they are brave enough to try and snatch it, I'll hear, a t I'll hear a tick damage, maybe I'll have a chance to explode the trail, do some extra damage, but generally I'm going to have that information, and there was a, an op like maybe they didn't get deterred, but there was a chance for them to deviate from what they wanted to do, which is always good. Um, another case for area denial is, let's say I'm in this position, let's say I'm a little bit weaker than this, Heavy's about to spawn in about a second, two seconds, I have exact timing, and my opponent's at rail. The idea of coming up, the, grabbing the health bubble, coming up the stairs, taking the heavy, I'm subject to a pre-fire rocket, might send me flying off the map. Uh, if my opponent hits two rails, I could die or be very near death, I'd be forced to come back down here anyway, and then how's the game state changed? They're still at rail, I'm still weak, this isn't here anymore. They're gonna be defending this like a hawk, this is absolutely the, the most instinctive thing for me to go for, so I can't, I have to go this way. And it's just um, generally unpleasant. So instead, you grab this health bubble, activate your trail, grab this armor, and then defend that potential drop down point. The reason you trail and then you spin around, fire the rockets, um, my opponent may say, like, hey, Chug's not going for the heavy, he's trying to escape by LG, I can drop for a rail attempt and then go take heavy, which is good for him. But this is why we trail, and this is why we pre-fire the rockets, to try and punish this kind of aggressive um, play. If he does happen to hit the shot, I wasn't railable, I can fall onto this stack, come out to a uh, top position, that he will have gone off to heavy, I can predict this, it's not likely that he will defer. He could, if he was, if he was like really confident, but generally the player will go take heavy. Maybe I'll have, be able to take Mega, maybe I'll come here, try bolt spam, something. Like, this is just a generally better outcome. So that's area denial. The second situation, and the one I most use it for, is engaging. So let's say my opponent's on Mega, and let's say I'm in this position, and they happen to not know that I'm here. I, let's say I have exact timing on Mega, and I attack just before it spawns. I can come in like this, and you can see I'm coming in pretty quick, 700 units per second, uh, roughly this position, and continuing to accelerate. I've got the opportunity to hit spam rockets and um, apply pressure, 
hopefully make them fall down or jump across, back up, so that I can then swoop in and take the Mega. But if I do this with ability, you can see I'm significantly faster. I'm hitting 900 units per second almost at this point, and that makes a huge difference. The, the, distant, the, the speed at which I can close the gap and the time it takes for them to react. So it's not just like, okay, he's going quick. What's this guy thinking? He's like, okay, well, maybe free fire a rocket and just sort of defend as I, like, wait for the Mega, which I don't know when it spawns. But incidentally, like, this terrain can obscure the pathway. Uh, if I'm scoping, if your opponent's scoping with the rail, it's even darkened. It's just you, harder to tell that this is coming. If your opponent is here and they see the, let's say, they don't see me and they're just, like, watching here, like, ready to react to either, maybe they see the trail, but even then, they're like, ah, oh, teleporter. Look up for the t TP. I'm already in this position. I'm already, and they have to flick. And then maybe they underestimate my speed, etc. Like, there's a lot that can... Like, this is me getting in close to the right weapon. Hopefully that they miss the rail or they just get pressured down, etc. But... <sighs> something you may have noticed is that when I activated my ability, I reactivated it straight away. I did this deliberately. This is called the double pop. I'll do it once more. And that's what it looks like. Now, if you're a Slash player, I encourage you to... And you haven't seen that before. I encourage you to pause, actually pause the video, and type down potential reasons for why I would do this. Why would this be good? You could say them out loud, say them in your head, like, just mentally think of them. But typing them down will give you the best result. Um, if you're a Slash player, there's multiple reasons I recommend you do this. Um, Maybe you come up with a reason that I don't have, and so you can walk away with more knowledge than me. That's cool. Uh, you could get 75% of the reasons, and then the last one or two, you're like, oh, that's I didn't think of that. That's cool. And you can really get that... Um, it'll hit home deeper, or it'll land deeper in your mind, and you'll, it'll be, you'll be more aware of it. So feel free to do that now. Okay, so there are a couple of reasons. The weakest reason is that my ability goes on cooldown as soon as I pop the trail as opposed to letting it run out. So if we just watch here, my ability hasn't gone on cooldown yet, and there it starts. This is opposed to double activating and it goes on straight away. This results in a three second time save, which is, in the grand scheme of things, not a whole lot. It's a time shard, it's almost a time shard I should say. It's about 60 or 70% of a uh, time shard. <coughs> Second reason is that when we activate our ability, we get the speed boost. That's just what we call it. Um, I think of it as a, an increase to acceleration, but it's probably more to do with an increase in your base speed, which then affects how the, the, the equation for sliding works. We can tell by if we activate our ability, our base speed goes up to 400, and our crouch speed goes up to is it 272, I, th I believe. Um, in any case, when we get that speed boost, that, that increase to acceleration, that doesn't go away if we pop the trail early. Okay, so we're not sacrificing that speed boost. But wh what we are getting rid of is the uh, auto forward movement, which I'm not sure if it's placebo, but it feels harder to control. It feels different than normal sliding. And so I'm more prone to making mistakes if the trail's being generated behind me, if I'm getting pushed forward. Um, I could just practice moving with the trail active and that and I could probably get that to a reasonable level, but it's just more comfortable for me to double pop it, especially in a situation where I'm never in a position to do damage with my trail. If I know my opponent's way over there, and I'm here, and I want to engage, close the gap, activating my trail is not going to help me do damage. So why do I need it there? Um, obscuring my, my movement, um, uh, comfort, the comfort level of my movement. <coughs> Third reason. And my favorite reason is that the trail is not there. So let's take the situation again, where I attack, but I don't pop the trail. Of the player in this position, we'll see the trail being generated. They have a visual indication that I have increased speed, that I'm attacking faster than normal. But if I double pop, this trail isn't there. They could underestimate the speed at which I'm coming in. And that is my favorite reason, is that uh, there's no visual indication that the speed the speed boost is there. So if you, a player spawns um, a player a slash player spawns in this position, they could come here, double pop their ability, 
sneak over to Railgun and maybe decide to commit and push or whatever. The, the player that spawns at, um, at quad will take Rocket and come to this position, but if they didn't know that I'd popped the trail, I'll get here much sooner and they'll be like, wow, that slash is really quick. And if they hadn't played against a slash before that who's, who had done that, they might not be sure if I activated trail or not. But if they were to spawning here, come across, look and they see the trails there, they have a visual indication of my direction. And so they can pre-fire a rocket assuming that I'll attack, like I'll close, the, I'll uh, cross the gap, hit the rail and um, go for heavy. You just pre-fire the rocket and then go back and do whatever you want over here. So the visual indication, big, my favorite reason. Um, are there any other reasons to pop twice? Um, I believe there's two, but they'll um, they'll come into play with the next scenarios. Okay, so the so the third scenario, this is <laughs> the third scenario being my second most common use of ability is time shy denial. So if I'm a slash, I'm playing a duel, playing against the likes of Visor, Nyx, Ranger, um, maybe a clutch thrown in there or an anarchy. I value my ability less than they do. If I've if I fought my opponent, say, in, yeah, let's say over here, this position, my opponent is visor, and we've traded, and I don't feel I, maybe I'm railable. I don't want to contest for heavy anymore. I can double pop ability. Very important. Take these off the map. Come back here. Take these off the map ready to rotate to take mega pressure off, etc. What I'm relying on is the fact that my opponent, knowing that a major item is coming up, has used sight, has seen where I am, has done a really good cheeky peaky rail, and then um, seen me run off. Maybe they tried to go for an angle, but th they miss me. Then they retreat, take their heavy. The the uh, ability cooldown since um, the, was it the, no the November patch, They've all been unified to 45 seconds. So the visor that activates sight for this item cycle cannot have it for the next cycle because I, as the slash paper, as the paper player, has taken these three off the map and then made a straight beeline for the others, take these three off the map. I'm going to have my ability up in much less time than he and I'll be able to use my ability to engage on a, vi on a visor that will not see me coming. Okay? So that's... That's a big, uh, a big utility is to take the time shards away from opponents who need them more than I do. Um, small benefit to this, uh, let's say it's not even, let's say I don't even directly interact with him. I activate my ability, double pop. I have the speed boost to then rotate however I want to, uh, however I want to, to then get away from being extended in in this part of the map. So I can, I can extend for time shards and then use ability to get to a safe lo safe location. Okay, denial. My second favorite, or second most common use of ability in duel. And the last situation is direct one-to-one uh, -one fights. So let's say we're on the ground and they have maybe they have cover to use, and we're both LGing. I can activate my ability, and this increases my base speed. It also increases my acceleration. This is a t like I'm not a hundred percent on this, but it feels like this is faster. And me moving like uh, across the three seconds of inc of increased acceleration, I have enhanced movement that my opponent will not be used to tracking. So for that reason, I might be able to avoid more damage. Might be able to um, move forward, bait them to switch to rocket, move back, um, and be out of the range of that damage, and to just uh, express my dodging more cleanly and more effect more effectively with my increased um, ground uh, ground based movement uh, acceleration there are uh, there's another fa fa factor facet to this if i'm playing against a ranger who likes his shotgun who likes his rockets i can activate my trail with my lg and if they orb at me they're also orbing into the trail so this is a situation where I would activate my trail and keep it um, keep it active. That way, I keep it um, sorry on the map so that if my opponent chooses to orb or d uh, 
maybe it just acts as a deterrent for them n not orbing or promoting them to orb past me so if I throw the orb I activate my trail I'm, I'll be looking here and also here as uh, locations to pre-fire my rocket okay so that pretty much wraps it up I know it's longer than you probably expected but uh, I wanted to be comprehensive and explain extensively the different situations that I use my ability there may be more that are possible there may be more that I use it but I'm just not aware but yeah engaging time shard denial and direct one-to-one -one fighting are the most prevalent uses I have used the you know deny the rocket launcher uh, trail the rocket launcher take heavy come back I have used that in the past but that's sort of fallen away with the increase of the, the cooldown on the ability as well as um, as well as what the the damage is much weaker than it used to be um, players shouldn't be as afraid of slash trail as they were in the past it's it doesn't explode for as much it doesn't it doesn't tick for that much anymore so for that case a player who's aware of this can just take it and be happy um, and in that situation I don't have ability and my opponent has rockets position I don't really like that that uh, situation especially against the stronger opponents anyway uh, that concludes for today I hope you've learned something and it was helpful and I'll see you later